Like to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Pavlo, Klimkin, thank you very much for being here on Euro News. We really appreciate your time. Uh, my first question for you is really this uh, ceasefire deadline is running out later this week. If the separatists don't lay down their arms, as the president's asked them to do, what's the plan B? We are fully committed to the peace plan. It's probably not a good time to think about plan B, plan C, plan D. It's the time to work on the presidential peace plan. And we have a number of opportunities to talk to the people on the ground. We have a clear idea how the presidential plan should work. So it's full commitment how to reach a success on the presidential peace plan. But you have no contingency option whatsoever because it doesn't seem, if we look at the events on the ground at the moment, that the separatists are going to do what you want. If you have a sort of contingency option right away, it's difficult to be concentrated on the main track. And now we are fully concentrated on the main track. If it does not function, we could figure out the plan B, plan C or plan D. Um, I just actually wanted to uh, maybe just pick up on the plan B. I mean, what your president said last week, those who will not lay down their weapons will be destroyed. What did he mean by that? Yeah, it's, it's as simple as that. There are a number of illegally armed groups in Donetsk and Lugansk, and we are ready to talk to everyone who going to lay down arms and is ready to talk. And if you are, as you call it, separatist, so the idea would be more independence and it's a sort of political dimension. What do you call them? Why, why should you destroy your own land actually, destroy the critical infrastructure, destroy the water lines, uh, the electricity lines, uh, destabilize uh, the whole region? It's not about that. And uh, some, some of them are really terrorists. So you call them terrorists? Yeah, there are different groups also in Donetsk, Lugansk. You can't say it's just about that or about that. And we are ready to talk. It's my point. I would like to stress it to everyone, really to everyone who is, uh, who is ready to talk. So that could include people who have previously taken up weapons before, but the condition is they have to lay them down. Yeah, but uh, also to the people who didn't commit heavy crimes. You know, so that would exclude people that. that... Yeah, how can, you, uh, how can you talk to the people who already committed heavy crimes? But if they're a party to this conflict, whether we like it or not, whether we like their aims or not, their motivations, Surely, uh, you're a very experienced negotiator from reading your CV. Surely you have to invite all parties to the table, whether you find their methods uh, distasteful. Look, Lu Donetsk and Lugansk are about millions of people living there. They are good people, as all Ukrainians. They are hardworking people. You know, they, the bulk of them, the absolute majority of them, don't support any sort of terrorists who are either directly or indirectly supported by Russia or, you know, a kind of criminal gangs browsing around. So it's about talking to Donbass, Donetsk and Lugansk, and we are ready to do that. But how can you engage the people who did commit heavy crimes, actually? It's, it's the point. I just wonder, though, I mean, just to focus on this language, we're talking about terrorists, bandits, uh, talking about destroying people who don't lay down their weapons. It's not really the language of peace. I'd perhaps put it to you that actually that pus pushes peace and the prospect of peace further away, that kind of rhetoric. No, it's, it's indeed a very important point. We don't call everyone who is, uh, you know, talking about more powers for Donbass terrorists, not at all. It's about a really small number of people who, uh, you know, go around, who browse with arms in their hands. It's about the people 
who now trying to break the ceasefire, who don't like the ceasefire to become sustainable. But it's not in the interest of the main bank of the people in Donbass. It's about a couple of thousands of people and we have millions of people in Donbass. Uh, just on the issue of Russia, yes. do you plan to hold a meeting with your counterpart, Sergei Lavrov? Not, not at the moment. Uh, Would you welcome those, that possibility? Uh, we, we had a phone conversation a couple of days ago. He congratulates me on my appointment, uh, but we have a number of contacts, but not at the moment. And uh, it's, it's critically important that Russia now supports the presidential peace plan as a whole, as a main framework for de-escalation. It's critically important that we have effective control on the border, just not allowing heavy weaponry and mercenaries infiltrate from Russia to Ukraine. And it's critically important that Russia withdraws the famous decision of the Federation Council about the possibility of using, of using Russian troops on the Ukrainian territory. Mr. Lavrov describes the peace plan as an ultimatum. What do you make of that? Not at all. It's the comprehensive frame which could be structured into three main parts probably. It's about de-escalation and it provides security and security guarantees for everyone who is ready to talk. It's about humanitarian dimension and social dimension, which is critical for everyone living here. And it's about important political dimension. It's about more decentralization, giving more powers to communities. It's about local elections. It's about number of things which are critical to the people in Donetsk. When you negotiate a solution to a conflict, you can never really have a win-lose situation, one side winning, one side losing. We have to look for the best win-win solution. Um, are you willing to compromise on anything with Mr. Lavrov? I'm thinking more of perhaps full EU membership or membership of NATO. Do those, do, does membership of those two clubs remain a long-term goal for Ukraine? No, our position is absolutely clear on that. Firstly, it's not a compromise that Ukraine should become a member of the European Union. Ukraine is a European country, Ukraine is a democratic country, and our ambition, and it's our uh, conce political consensus, but it's also our clear consensus in our society that Ukraine should become a member of the European Union but the possible NATO membership is not on our agenda because we don't have such a consensus in Ukraine. So we can't uh, you know, you know, speculate about uh, a sort of membership uh, in that case. Not midterm, not long term. Foreign Minister Pavlo Klimkin, thank you very much for being with us. It was a pleasure indeed, thanks. Thank you. Cheers.